Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, one of the things we were talking about, I was going down through a litany of things of concerns that people that come into my office, and of course, these are concerns we all have. Things like taxes, what they're going to do in the future, inflation, volatility, market risk, living longer, making sure we don't run out of money as a result of that the debt that we have in our country and how we're going to pay that down uh, as well as of course the deficits that we continue to run uh, unfunded liabilities such as pensions and social security and medicaid we hear about you know how much trouble they're in the pressure they're under and how we have to fix these where is that money going to come from and you know these are the things by the way when you think of taxes when you start looking at unfunded liabilities that our government has where's that money coming from was coming from the taxes right so how are they going to get around that how are they going to fix that um, health care costs uh, these are, which are rising at a much about double two, two to three times in fact what inflation is going up uh, again nursing homes long-term care now here's some other things I'll throw in China largest debt and housing bubble in the history of uh, of the world in fact uh, Europe most of Europe's banks are are in very dire straits and of course we've got Brexit and other things that are going over there what impact is that going to have Japan the oldest country on the planet by 2040 50 percent of their population will be over age 65 think about that Poverty is everywhere in South America. There are those concerned about a housing bubble, things that, you know, commercial real estate in particular. Um, derivatives are, are greater now than, than before the financial crisis. So all these are the kinds of concerns. We're going to talk about some things that can impact that, though, as well, in terms of what that means, you know, how can we, in fact, see our economy and how can we overcome some of these issues and a big part of that. Today, we had a, a, a pretty negative jobs report. I think it was about half of what, we, what the expectations were, about 98,000 jobs, as opposed to uh, the projections over 200,000, 200, 240 even. And then uh, you take that, you pair that in with, uh, you also reduce the, uh, the numbers from prior months. So what does it say? Well, we still got a long way to go, don't we? And here's the other part of that. Jobs is going to be the key in terms of a recovery. All right, here's what we're going to do. You need a plan, okay? A comprehensive plan. It takes all of this into consideration and helps make sure you financially are prepared for whatever may come your way. Whatever life brings your way, there's a plan in place that's going to be able to weather that and it's going to help you thrive in those times. So if you want to have, take advantage of this time and be one of the first 10 callers to my office at 615-376-5325, I will assist you. I will help you develop a comprehensive financial plan. All right. This is going to help you as far as Social Security questions, Medicare, health care costs that are that are related to Medicare, um, investment analysis, help you make sure that you've got you know what kind of risk you've got in your portfolio, how to improve your portfolio. Uh, your general overall financial plan in terms of your assets, liabilities, income, expenses, we take all that in, we add in for inflation, we add in for taxes, rate of return on your investments, and we can show you your financial future, okay? And if you don't like to look at that financial future, we can show you how to improve it. So if you're one of the first 10 callers, 615-376-5325, Tess is standing by, she'll get your information. And she'll send you out a packet of things that you'll need with a checklist of things you'll need to bring to your appointment with me so that I can get this plan done for you, okay? Whether it's, it's not, and by the way, for the first 10 callers, again, when you come in to see me, I'll also give you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Peace, excuse me, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement. Okay, one of the things that comes in here is that this is what you're going to get by the way it's just a small little packet a little questionnaire and a checklist of items that you'll you know to bring in and again tess will send that out to you i want to stress to you ah, many times i see uh, these offers for consultations free consultation this is a checklist by the way so again not not too hard to do free consultations what's what's the value of a free consultation it's great if you're going in to see someone now, in, as far as financial advice, and you've got some specific one, two questions, you just need a couple answers. We try to do that for you here each and every week. You don't even have to come in, right? <laughs> but for those, it's not just a free consultation I'm offering. I'm offering up to do a comprehensive financial plan. Uh, I typically charge thousands of dollars for these plans. For the first 10 callers, you get to get this plan done for you at no cost. And again, I set aside time in my calendar 
to provide this to do these uh, on a limited basis all right because I really want to try to help you get something that's solid that you can actually work off of not just a you know shoot the breeze for an hour and say thank you very much okay so for the first 10 callers again take advantage of that now I'm gonna get I've, I've shared some of the negative things with you now let me share some positive things one of those being uh, the first chart, if we've got it, a solid start to 2017. The S&P 500 index extended its winning streak uh, to six quarters on the back of improving earnings and a slowly brightening economic outlook. So this is the one. I don't know if you can see this here. But basically, we're seeing the S&P going up. Uh, at record rates all right the index hit several in fact new records high during new record highs during the quarter and in fact if we look at records on the next chart records are set frequently during bull markets so the S&P 500 has already closed at an all-time high 13 times so far in 2017 there have been 141 new records since this bull market began back in 2009 records were scarce for years after the peak in 2000, but they have otherwise been commonplace during periods of rising markets. So this is one of the areas that we're seeing. And in fact, last year, the S&P 500 index, the uh, total return in 2016 was 9.54%. So a very good year in 2016. Now it's interesting, there are other indices that I mentioned earlier, and I'm gonna talk about those in a moment. But let's take a look, because when we're looking at the of course, the S&P 500 index is the 500 largest companies in the United States. They make up 70% of the money that's in the stock market. And the, the S&P 500 index, by the way, if you invest in that index, and there are a number of different funds like Vanguard and others that have S&P 500 index funds, if you invest in that index, you'll, you would also find that it outperforms about 80 to 90% of uh, equity mutual funds in the marketplace. So one of the things on the next slide markets tend to continue after rising continue to rise rather after uh, record highs so what this is showing in fact is that while some investors are are understandably wary and this is the thing i see when clients are coming in they're concerned right they're seeing these record highs and are worried well what does that mean does that mean we're in for a big drop in the market well, in actuality, these periods on, on balance, and again, these are averages, all right, have been followed by further moves to the upside. So after the more than 600 daily record highs dating back to 1980, the S&P 500 has risen by an average of 11.3% over the following year. Now, I want to put a cautionary tale on here. The 80s and 90s were the strongest two back-to-back -back decades in the history of the stock market. All right, the chance of that happening again is, is a very small, like 1% chance that we might see a period like that again. All right, so I'm gonna kind of, I wanna give you a kind of take this with a grain of salt in this analysis. Over the following year, after nearly one third of these peaks, the index has increased by more than 20%. So the bottom line is they're just basically, the analysts are saying that stock parts stock prices tend to trend in both directions and in a bull market that generally means going up so in other words they're going to that, that continued momentum is what they're talking about so we'll come off of the slides for a minute I'm going to share something with you here understanding as I'm going through this is a very positive analysis I'm sharing with you and I'm doing that because we've also I shared with you some of the negative things that are concerns that, that that we have and the cyclical part of the markets and are we due for a bear market there are a lot of things that could trigger this bear market okay, or could trigger a bear market but the trends right now are, are more on the positive side than they are on the negative side with regard to how the market is doing now so again, we'll go to the next slide. The, this bull market, as I mentioned, ranks uh, as the second longest and strongest on record. So for instance, when you look at percentages from, 19, and I mentioned that 87, the, the uh, 1980s, again, from 87 to uh, 2000, we had 147, that was the strongest bull market, 147 months of uh, up, with a, an increased percentage of 582% in the stock market return. If you look at the one today, uh, in the period that we're in now from 2009, it's, nine, it's again, second longest at 96 months. Now, not quite as strong, all right, but still 249% uh, increase since the beginning of the bull market. 
So this is, uh, it has also produced one of the biggest gains on records. The index has more than tripled since bottoming more than eight years ago. And then here's the other part. Earnings continue to rebound. The recovery in corporate profits that began in mid-2016 has continued into 2017. Earnings and revenues are now both growing at a healthy clip thanks to affirming global economy relative stability in the foreign exchange and commodities market. Forward-looking guidance has also improved, suggesting a further rebound in the quarters ahead. So this is what the analysts are saying. Now, here's one of the things that we want to take into consideration with this on the corporate profits is understanding where we're coming from. The corporate profits for a large, you know, to a large part, this had to do with, you know, the way the companies were paring down expenses and doing a lot of things internally, but it wasn't showing necessarily with as much revenue growth as we would like to see. One of the things that we're seeing now with that and where we're encouraged is if we can increase jobs, and this is again, it all comes back to jobs. Increasing jobs is the key to in keeping uh, the, the positive news uh, positive, <laughs> if you will. Because what we're looking at is if we want to see the markets continue to rise, if we want to see conti companies continue to be profitable, things like re uh, you know, reducing regulatory uh, uh, handcuffs that are on them currently, uh, helping bring more money back to put it into play, uh, helping them with regard to um, creating an environment of companies can bring back money that's trapped overseas. And this has been talked about quite a bit in the news. If they, and this is where reducing taxes can help and again, improve in the regulatory environment. What that's done, we can go ahead and get rid of that slide. What that's going to do then is that's going to help companies, right, invest back in themselves, grow them, that means hiring more people. And we've got a lot of projects and a lot of things going on that can help that. When that happens, when we see jobs, right, people making more money, people spending more, the, everything, right, the high tide starts rising all boats, and we see improvements all the way across the board. And that's the good news, and that's whether we can, we're going to talk more about that in a moment. In fact, uh, we're going to talk about how the Fed now is starting to raise interest rates. What impact is that going to have? All right, how is that going to affect your savings? How is that going to affect the stock market? Wasn't long ago, about a year ago, in fact, it was a very negative effect. But today, it seems to be having a different impact, and we're going to talk about why that might be and how you can use that to benefit you and your plan, all right? First, a quick break. <laughs> Join us here. We'll be right back on The Retirement Report. The time is